Today we are going to talk about color mixing with a larger variety of colors and this is a special request from a subscriber so I always enjoy hearing what you want to learn about so thank you. Um, I'm going to be using this. I just wanted to cover this real quick. I don't have any affiliate marketing so this is just a really a true recommendation. Um, I found these. I love them. They work. They are Gray Matters paper palettes. They are a disposable palette, so if you're in that situation where you need a palette that you have to get rid of at the end of the session, this is a really good option. It has a coated paper so that you can easily mix. The paint slides around. It doesn't get stuck to it, and it's neutral gray. So good. You never want to be mixing your colors on a colored surface. White would be the next best, but neutral gray is the best solution if you can do it. The other thing I really love and a lot of my art students really love about this is that it has the real color reel on here. What do I mean by that? It has actual paint tube names. So important, right? Because you can go, well, I see where blue is, but which blue? There is 80,000 blues. So I love these and this is what I'm going to be using in the video. So stay tuned. My materials are the um, paper palette you see here, and this is an inside cover of another one just so you can see the color wheel. And I am using Golden's line of acrylic paint called Open, which is their slow drying acrylic. So if you're trying to mix colors and learn how color interaction happens, having a slow drying paint, whether that's um, this line or maybe oil paint can be really helpful because it'll stay wet for you. It's not just going to keep drying on you and make you frustrated. Um, I lined these up how they are over here. Now this has, well, I don't know, 40 different colors on it, but that would be extremely overwhelming. <laughs> so let's just start small. Uh, I'm just dipping my brush in water so that I can get a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to paint anything. I'm just going to show you how this color mixing happens. So here I have a warm red. That is a red to the warm side of the color wheel. Red, orange, yellow. And so if I take this red and I just grab some and I pull it out here and I mix it with this yellow, I'm going to get a nice bright orange color. Now this yellow is the Hansa yellow, so it's not as strong tinting as let's say the cadmium yellow. That's because that one um, is more opaque. This one is more transparent. But if we look at the color mixing, this looks a lot like a hamburger that has the ketchup and the mustard mixed together. You kind of go like, oh yeah, I know this color. I've seen this. I add more yellow. That's the pure yellow. And you can see when we start mixing it in with the red, how it lightens up. So that is an orange. Now, if you take a more purpley red, that's a cool red, like alizarin crimson over here. And this is one of the reds I use, you know, a lot. So I love this color. And this is the, um, the mix of it, not the traditional color, because the traditional color just runs away. It's a fugitive color. But getting back to the topic, if I take a cool color and I mix the yellow into it. What happens here is that this orange isn't hot and vibrant like this one. It is more brown. And that's because by having a cooler red, it's gone towards the blue a little bit. I'm inviting a third primary in to the, the game. And whenever you have a third primary coming in, all of a sudden, you're, um, you're inviting brown, you're inviting mud. And if you want mud, that's great. But if you don't want mud, that's not so good. So if you're, you know, having trouble getting your colors to come out, you know, your secondary colors, you have your primary red, yellow, blue, when you're trying to mix your secondary colors, orange, purple, green, and they're not coming out and they're coming out brown, it's because you've invited a third primary to the party. 
So let's do this uh, with the yellow and the blue. So if we take yellow and then we just slowly add a little bit of the blue to it, remember the yellow doesn't have a very strong tinting strength, so you don't need much blue to make it really be active in there. Look at this beautiful green. So this is the Hansa yellow and the cobalt blue. I have a really nice green there. I could see myself using that for a lot of things. Kind of looks like the apple tree leaves right outside my window right now. Okay, now I take the Hansa yellow. Plop. It's official sound effects. And ultramarine blue. Now, you probably guessed ultramarine blue is a blue that's a little bit more to the purpley side, to the warmer side, to the to the darker, you know, I don't even know how to explain that. It's very, vi you know, um, violet shade in there. And here we have a beautiful green. It's darker than this green, and maybe that's just a um, reflection of the yellow to the to the green. I mean, excuse me, the yellow to the blue ratio. So let's grab some more yellow. See what happens if we try to lighten it up to match this one here. Oh, that's way more yellow. Keep mixing. Keep mixing. Okay, so I'm not sure how much this is going to come across. This one is a little bit more dull, not by much, because these two and this, this is, I mean, it's not that far of a difference, but these would act like different colors on your canvas. Now, let's do red and blue. So, <clears throat> if I have warm red, warm blue. More warm blue. <laughs> More warm blue. Okay. Here is the purple that made. Warm red, which is a um, cad red medium. Ultramarine blue, so a cool blue. really hard to mix to a purple with this combination and I see students struggle with this all the time they go you know hey I'm taking red and I'm adding blue and I'm not getting purple what is wrong with me it's nothing is wrong with you it's that's the problem with the warm to cool is that you've invited the third primary to the party and it's making brown that is not a purple that is a brown Okay, so those were the warm reds. Let's do the same thing again, but with cool red. So let's do cool, cool first. So alizarin crimson that, oh my goodness, looks mighty like that color, huh? And then we add cool blue to it. We're just gonna get this really dark color. And in fact, I'm gonna come back and add some white at the end of this so you can see some of these kind of open up and bloom and get a better idea of what we're talking about here as far as the the hue, the color that we're getting. Because sometimes things get really dark and it's gets as the value gets darker, it can be harder to see the color, the hue in it. All right, blizzard and crimson, that's a cool red with a warmer blue. And we get um we get a purple, but it has a bit of a dullness to it. Okay, now I'm gonna add titanium white. Titanium is better to use than zinc white when you're doing color mixing and trying to figure out how colors behave because it is an opaque white. 
and I have more about the difference between titanium and zinc in a different video. All right, coming back to my mixture. This was my cool red and my warm blue. And here we get a dull purple. I mean, it's nice, it's okay, but it's lost its vibrancy. And once you're in mudland, you're gonna take that with you as you mix back out of mudland. So I always like trying to start with my colors being as vibrant as possible and then graying them down or browning them down if I need to and as I need to instead of being stuck with something that's really dull and fighting it the whole time. So this was this alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. We have a purple. It's not bad. It's not the most exciting purple, but it's less brown than this one. This one over here is definitely a little bit more brown. If you can't see that yet, it might be the video, or it could be that you're just at the beginning of color mixing, and the more you do it, the more you're going to notice these changes and these differences in the colors and go, oh, I get it now. So just keep, just keep at it. Um, because of this, with the purples especially, I like to have a purple on my palette. And also with the greens, I like to have a little bit more of a lively green on my palette. So I'm going to show you that next. So these tubes are not perfect looking because they are used and loved tubes. And that's how art should be, in my opinion. Like, go out and do it and make a little bit of messes if you need to and just you know, love it and enjoy it. So, dioxazine purple. It's got an X and a Z in it. What a fun name. And phthalo green. This case is blue shade. I love phthalo green yellow shade. Um, I think when I made the order, this was the color that was available. So, so now I'm going to show you why I have these colors on my palette as well. So phthalo comes around here in the um, color wheel. It's a bright color. It's got some blue in it. It's got some, you know, phthalo green yellow shade is more yellow, um, but it is very strong to mix with. This is like adding goat cheese to a recipe. All you can taste later on is the goat cheese. I made a mistake with this color the other day. I used it as a um, kind of a like a when I was plenary painting to make some marks to figure out where I was gonna go later on in the painting. And then it just kind of kept infecting all the colors after that and I had to struggle with it. So be careful, it is strong. This dioxazine purple is um, beautiful and dark and vibrant and also transparent. So what does that mean in real world? Look at how pretty it is. Oh, so pretty, I love it. Okay, and white. Yes, see, that is what vibrant purple looks like. These guys just got like, you know, blue looking from that. Now, phthalo green, getting back to that one, when you mix it with yellow, oh, and I have a video about that as well called How to Mix Realistic Greens, but I'm going to add a lot of yellow and then my tiny teeny bit of green okay maybe a tiny bit more all right and I'm just gonna keep mixing this just real slowly see how I'm taking the darker color and slowly adding it in this case thalo green is so strong of a mixture that you really want to just slowly add it in Otherwise, you're just going to be getting more yellow and more green and suddenly you're going to have, you know, $10 worth of paint and you're still trying to mix to the color you want. And it's just too much volume. So I like making small paint recipes. Like just little tiny piles. Figure out where I'm going. And then when I know that's the color I want to make, 
or I can just make a lot of it all at once and be ready to use it. Now see how dull these guys are because this color is so bright. So these are kind of the newer colors that were invented about a hundred years ago. These are more traditional colors. Um, but sometimes if you're, if you're not able to mix to where you go, want to go, maybe your primary is the culprit. So happy painting. Hope that helps. Please let me know what else you want to know about because um, these videos are for you. So thank you. Please like and subscribe for more or visit my website at kristinoneillart.com for online classes.